will steer clear of more borrowing. That is from the Debt Management Office to the federal government. The Debt Management Office has issued a stern warning to the federal government against additional borrowing, citing that 73.5% of this year's budget will be used to service debt. And this high debt service to revenue ratio is unsustainable and poses a threat to debt sustainability. Well, this morning we have been joined by Mukhtar Mohammed, who is a financial analyst, to take a look at this and understand it better. Good morning, Mr. Mohammed. Good morning. Well, he's joining us via my phone. We wish you were here live in person, but we can understand the difficulties of navigating Lagos route. Um, now, Mr. Mukhtar, Nigeria has been running a deficit budget for many years, many years, with an increased level of borrowing. Nigerians kicked in last year and this year against the borrowings of this last administration to the point that Nigerians were worried that the country would suffer so much from the kind of borrowings that we saw the last administration engaged in. But the Ninth Assembly then increased the... You know, from the central bank from 5% to 15% limit. Now, talk to us about how this message has hit you and the questions they raise. Well, thank you. Um, I think when it comes to borrowing, the, the, the Afghan administration, like you said, started well in terms of borrowing, they were borrowing for specific projects. But later on, they went really way, way off um, what they're supposed to do. And at that time, the debt management office kept saying that uh, the debt to GDP was uh, was okay. But remember, people like us kept saying that it's not GDP you used to pay your debt. Mm -hmm. You actually use revenue. And they kept using the GDP to deceive Nigeria. I'm surprised that the debt management office is now coming out to say we cannot borrow any longer. Because up till the time President Buhari was leaving, former President Buhari was leaving, this current debt, I mean, this debt management uh, office kept saying that we're not at any risk. So for the first time, they are now beginning to check the incoming administration, which is good. But I think um, it's coming too late because, um, like you rightly pointed out, the ways and the means is already increased. And even before the outgoing administration, there have been some borrowing through the ways and the means that we shout that was uh, too much on the high side. So definitely, I don't think um, borrowing on itself or running a budget on deficit, even America run budget on deficit, but then they are looking at um, their, their ability to be able to um, use those deficits to cover up in terms of um, projects that are revenue driven. But what we have in Nigeria is projects that are politically driven not project that revenue driven to pay off for some of these debts. All right. So we, when we're talking about these debts that the federal government borrowed, especially hurriedly uh, towards the termination of the last administrations, Nigerian kept asking what were these monies borrowed for? We what where are they? Where are the things that they were borrowed for? Now in in warning the federal government not to borrow anymore, they are advising for revenue to be increased, that they should target revenue increase. But then they're also talking about tax. They're looking to tax, uh, taxing Nigerians more for that. How do you respond to that? Well, I, I, I don't think it's right for them to begin to tax Nigerians so much. They've started already with, um, uh, with um, diesel. They said, now if you buy this, you're going to pay 7.5 uh, fat, which is, I mean, you know that diesel is mostly used by by manufacturers and most of the industries in Nigeria. So definitely they are beginning to raise the cost of living. So for goods and services that are diesel driven are high and you know, you know that almost um, every business in Nigeria is being is being run through through diesel, even if you have the banks, even if you have um, companies. So definitely that also is going to show like you've right, rightly pointed out. But when it comes to tax, 
I still believe that uh, the government need to come up with an innovative way of collecting tax. Because what we have, have now, um, the informal sector, which is the largest employer of labor in Nigeria, mm -hmm. is still not taxed. Uh, when I mean the informal sector, you're talking about small businesses, you're talking about SMEs, you're talking about day-to-day uh, -day businesses like the market woman. So those are the type of people that we should be looking at. How can we bring them into the tax next? If you can bring them into the tax next, you won't tax already tax. And to bring them into the tax, there's, there must be results that is showing that is impacting on their businesses. They can't be paying you tax and they are still providing power for themselves. They are still providing a lot of amenities for themselves. So definitely government need to come up with a way not to tax the already tax. I always feel that government ways should be how can we get the informal sector to pay tax? And the only way you can get that sector to pay tax is also by you beginning to do something for that sector so that they will see the impact of what government is doing. They will naturally want to pay tax so that they can see more uh, development in those areas so that uh, their businesses can improve. But what we have now is a government that is revenue driven. Uh, and again, I keep saying in developed economy, tax has gone beyond a key for revenue. Tax is not being used as a means to grow the economy. So why are we not looking at that also to use tax to grow our economy? By bringing in multinationals, by bringing in service companies into this land and giving them tax bracket. And by that, they will provide employment. And those people that they provide employment for, those people will pay tax. And after some time, that same businesses will begin to pay tax. So it will be a win-win situation for the government. But as it stands now, I think government is more revenue-driven than looking than tax to root. Still talking about revenue, um, improving revenue, because that's they, they have no other way to go than to do that. And also look into plugging some holes that should be plugged. Uh, issues of personnel, overload, and capital expenditure. If not properly addressed, government may continue to borrow. And also talking about SMEs, you, you, you touched in a very... SMEs, I discussed with a member of, uh, of, of, their, of the association, and they raised alarm over the fact that they are not receiving any kind of support from the government. And I asked, what about the bank of industry? And he enumerated the challenges that they faced in getting any kind of loans from the bank of industry. Also, there are some captains of industry who have complained that uh, monopoly has been given to some selected or anointed individual or individual group, um, which has killed a lot of the industries in this country. So if we're talking about um, improving revenue, what are the dynamics that must change? What are the dynamics that this federal government, this new sheriff in town, must change if revenue can be improved? You've, you've said one thing. I think the first thing you need to look at the overhead cost, a bloated government uh, uh, civil service. Um, they need to go back to the Onosoya report. That report is still there. The former president said that we implement the industrial report in the tail end of his administration and they never did anything about it. I think they should go back to the industrial report and begin to look at agencies that are overlapping in each other and begin to see how they can now bring those agencies together and then they do what we call right size. And again, but you know, when it comes to right sizing, we still come back to this revenue. If you are doing right sizing, you must make sure you have the, the funds to be able to pay. Um, those people that you have saying they should leave the system, not keeping them out of the system for so long without um, paying, giving them their their their, their gratuity or their, lap, their what is tr um, truly due them. So that is one. Then um, this the, when you talked about that, then you look at you need to look at political appointees. Um, the president, we, well, presently now we've not seen that yet. Um, all previous president have had two senior special assistants. They are senior special assistant, special assistant. I hope um, um, the current president will, will decide to just use one current, uh, uh, one personal assistant, whether I call it senior personal assistant or, or personal assistant, or I'm talking about that of media. Mm -hmm. And also they need to look at political appointees. How many special assistants do you have? How many, I think the president has started in the, in the, in, in the right way by making, they're just having 20 um, senior special assistants. 
So that is, they need to look at that, political appointees, not using, um, appointing so much of them, and those one we come at, appoint, senior, uh, appoint special assistants, special assistants, we appoint special assistants, then that will overblow the civil service. Then, in terms of revenue drive, I think the government should also look at, um, um, uh, look at, like I skipped saying, the informal sector, and then also begin to cut the, 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 the um, excesses in terms of loophole, in terms of revenue drainage. Because a lot of revenue that are due to government are not coming to government because of the system that are in place. So government need to improve upon their system in, in revenue drive. So that we don't have somebody like what we have in the previous administration where the accountant general can be able to steal up to 120 years, over 80 billion. And yet there was no system to track it down until you finish stealing all those money. Those are revenue that are included to government. And also government should also begin to look at what are they at, what are what 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 are they bringing to the table what are they bringing to the table because again you need to bring something to the table to be able to attract revenue like i said if you the smes are complaining why are you not looking at the smes why are you not giving some smes tax bracket because of the type of technology or because of the type of um, the type of uh, product that they are selling on the area of monopoly i think sometimes i tend to when people say some I've been giving monopoly. Let me give you an example. Mm. If you say Dangote, I've been giving monopoly in the area of refined petroleum products. Remember that a lot of companies, a lot of individuals, a lot of companies have been giving this license for years, and none of them had the courage to even start a refinery. Yes, you might say that Dangote started the refinery and the federal government just supported him. So others should try and start their own and see whether the federal government will support them or not. Remember, the only support that the federal government gave to Dangote has to do with the supply of FX at official rate for him because of the critical nature of what uh, the project he was doing to the Nigerian economy. So other you stop thinking about, oh, he monopolized meant we came to that at, at the point, but now people are not saying that again because there are other players. And even in the refinery of petroleum product, remember that gov the government still have other players now. Gua refinery will still be coming in, in, on steam anytime soon. We have the modular refineries people that have been given license. They are now encouraged to begin to build their refinery because they realize that um, the government has finally deregulated that sector. Remember when Dangote was even building the refinery, government was not even thinking of deregulation. But he was thinking of, look, if I bring my product, I know fully that some Nigerians will still buy from me. And, and also if I'm not buying from Nigeria, I can export. He wasn't just thinking of Nigeria alone. So when they think of monopoly, sometimes I have a different view about that. Thank you. Well, clearly you do have a different view because uh, those who do not share your view uh, have their reasons also. Um, but th that's a matter for another day. But those, as I said, I am guessing, and I believe beyond guessing, that the new sheriff in town would have to do something to create the enabling environment for all investors to play fairly and win squarely so that if we're going to improve our revenue uh, the tax burden on nigerians will not be so much because nigerians are already crying uh, to the high heavens well um, what about the extant law the extant legislation on government borrowing especially uh, the Fiscal Responsibility Act 2007 as it relates to means and ways advances in order to moderate the growth rate of public debt. I, I'm going back to this because this well, is one of the things that was raised by the DMO uh, saying that this federal government should respect that. But we didn't see that respected by the last administration. Do you think that the last administration may have uh, laid a very bad precedence that this administration may follow? Or do you see this administration respecting the law? The last administration led, um, laid a very bad precedence. Uh, we all know they did that. And uh, we all know why they did that. And, and again, remember, they also went through the legislations ever to sort of increase the ways and means by 15%. Um, even if it's yet to be signed into the law, we don't know whether that was passed, that was signed into law by President Buhari before he left office. So they've set a bad precedent. And then it's good that uh, 
institutions are built to protect the nation. But what we had last time, we saw a CBM that was more or less like a, like a parastator under the presidency. And then we saw a debt management office that was toothless. Yeah, this is the first time that the debt management office seems to be having his voice heard in the area of borrowing because it seems to support every every aspect of what the government said as regard borrowing up to yesterday that they made those statements. So for me, maybe we are going into a new dispensation whereby uh, they are beginning to look at that and beginning to say, look, we don't have to go this route any longer. We have to do things differently. Maybe, maybe. But outside of that, I think the previous administration were culpable in the way they borrow, especially, like I said, they started well. I must give it to them. Initially, they were borrowing for infrastructures. They were, every borrowing was tied to specific projects, especially the Chinese, the, the loans that were coming from China. But after some time, they just saw that as one of the most uh, uh, convenient way of, um, of borrowing and they just, um, were getting money. And they just kept borrowing until the Chinese loan dried up. Because for three years now, Chinese, the Chinese government have refused to give us any loan, and that is why they, they set up. So okay, so just uh, before it, it, we go, just before we go, why yes. do you think the DMO finally found your voice? I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's because of the policy of the current administration. It seems to be driving a a a a, a, a policy of growing the economy, and the DMO wants to be part of that group. So they need to advise the president accordingly for me that's the way i think because outside of that i i i don't see anything because they have not the the current I mean, why the gmo is saying that president um, um, uh, president paula tinubu is in is, is in uh, is in uh, paris at the moment in a financial um, summit and what he's trying to do there is to attract investors into nigeria is to tell them that look these are the policy that have been made with are driving towards this and that so you can come into nigeria and that. so but the debt management office might have been seen that in case they are, they are offering you loan because of your reform, please reject it. I'm sure that's why they are raising their voice at the moment. Outside of that, I don't see any reason for them raising their voice. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Mukhtar Mohammed. Thank you for your time and insight. My pleasure. Thank you. The breakfast continues. We'll be back in a moment with our very second hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>